All right, are you good? Yeah. All right, so good morning, everyone. Um, so I have, uh, all right, so, so I have uh, two topics to discuss. Um, so one is the, like one topic is the TCBPF rework. We discussed this on Monday, so I, I'm not going into the details here. And the other one is uh, that I wanted to bring up is a proposal for a, for a micro beef driver. Um, what, like what is the overall goal? So the overall goal that I would like uh, Cilium to get to and with that BPF as well is to basically have Kubernetes pod networking with the same efficiency as if, it, as if an application would run in the host. Um, like from the, like just to provide some context from the past, there have already been steps that uh, were con con conducted that went into this direction. So one thing that, that was quite long ago uh, is, for example, to retain the, the SKB socket association across the network namespace switch. And the other thing that we have in Cilium that we build is basically to do all the forwarding inside the host namespace uh, out of the TC layer. So it doesn't even go into the upper stack. Um, thanks to a couple of helpers. And the latest uh, thing is basically the SKB timestamp preservation. So I, like, like if you look at all of those, they kind of have a common theme. Like, in, in my opinion, one is um, to hold the SKB socket association all the way, like, like from the parts network stack to the physical driver when you send the packet out. And only then, once you send the packet out, the TCP stack from the pod uh, network namespace is being signaled um, that the packet is actually on the wire. So it gives b better feedback, for example, for uh, TCP TSQ. Um, the other thing is to retain uh, important SKP metadata that, is, uh, that shouldn't be scrubbed. For example, like the timestamp. And the other thing is like an efficient network namespace switch. So you don't need to go through the, through the uh, backlog queue when you switch network namespaces. So just to provide a quick context, so basically, uh, uh, like when you have BPF program attached to the physical NIC, um, it can do the BPF redirect peer, like to have like, an, like a fast network namespace switch by just resetting the device and then going into another loop in the main receive uh, handler. And that's pretty much it. So it's pretty much, uh, so it's really zero cost to go into the network namespace. And on the way out, the setup that we have right now is basically on the Weave device inside the host namespace. On TC Ingress, uh, the program there that we have is doing FIP lookup. And then um, when the neighbor entry is in the table, it will do just directly a BPF redirect. Or if it's not in the table, it will use the BPF redirect neighbor helper. So it will push the packet into the neighboring subsystem to then resolve the ARP, for example, and then uh, forward it to the, to the physical device. And the good thing um, with, with such a setup is basically that, the, as I mentioned, that the socket association to the SKB is preserved all the way until the, uh, like to, to the NIC, where there's, for example, MQ and, and, and FQ. And then FQ can, can do its job because it also looks whether there's a socket um, um, attached to the, like associated with the SKB, and then can, can queue it properly. Um, and with the recent uh, work that was merged into the kernel, like the, the delivery time is basically preserved. So I think that's also an important step towards this direction to, to get the um, networking more efficient from the, from the pod itself. Um, so looking further, one, one thing that still is not resolved yet is when you have traffic that is uh, leaving the network namespace. So typical example for the, for the Weave device. So it's uh, resetting the, it's, so it's basically setting the device to the, to the Weave peer in the host namespace. And then it's queuing the packet to a per CPU backlog queue. And if needed, it's, it schedules another NAPI instance. And then NetRx 
action will basically pick it up. So there's this process backlog thing, which is uh, one of the polling callbacks, and then it will pick the packet back up from the uh, from the per CPU backlog queue, and then it will push it up into the into the upper stack. And I think like back then it was probably done just to avoid uh, kernel stack overflow. This was maybe this would be my uh, assumption. Um, when the kernel stack was not as big as today, so that you get the fresh stack. And uh, but one thing that I'm plan uh, planning to experiment with is to just directly call into the receive routine uh, from the device driver's XMIT, so you don't even go through this backlog queue. So this would be my proposal. Whether this grants a new, uh, let's say. Microweave driver or not, this can also be for discussion whether this should just be in the weave driver. I, I have my opinions, we can elaborate on that. Um, but just to gather some feedback, do you think, like, what do people think have, uh, was there some experimentation done in this record um, already from some of you or not? Or the, the point being that you would have the TC hook inside the receive SKV, right? Is that, I mean, that's the point, right? You want to get to the, you want to get to the BPF program, right? So I, I basically want to avoid that the, the, the packets that they have to go through the yeah. backlog queue, so they, they will go directly to the receive path. I mean, could we just put like a side? XDP program that does the redirect in there? Like, like can call you, can, it, can call it on your, yeah, like, like, do we even need to do net net if receive SKB? Can we just call like when the when the does the the VETH does the SKB forward, mm. right to the other VETH? Yep. Can we just call like an XDP program running on top on that VETH? Be like on the peer. So why would you do that? Because it's like XDP receive. I mean, at that point, you get your BPF program, and you don't have net if receive SKB. You don't have anything else, right? Like it's just your XDP program is there, and then instead of doing the net if receive, you just put it on the transmit queue of where you want to go. Just do like a redirect. Like this is an XDP in quotes redirect because it's, it's kind of like, I mean, but, it's an SKB. It's not really mm. an XDP. Like, but like you could redirect it directly. You wouldn't have to get in this receive SKB thing at all. Okay, I, I, I see, you see what, what I'm you saying. Mean. Like, I mean, I mean, like I was just wondering, like re regarding XDP. I mean, like at this point, you do have an SKB, right? Like to, to transform it to an XDP. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I just call it like you. I wouldn't actually yeah. turn it into an SK XDP buff. Yeah. But like the hook point would be equivalent to XDP in the VETH. Like like so, think about like XDP on a real NIC, like mm. would be is in the receive path, right? Before it's ever turned into yeah. before it's given to the stack. Yeah. So this would be like XDP in the sense that the hook would be inside the VETH driver mm -hmm. on the receive when you do the SKB forward, mm. like you know when you switch the dev and then you in yeah. theory you scrub it. Um, like we could just have an XDP hook there. And maybe it handles it with SKB, right? Like you might and need then to you do some sugar to make that work. But. And then you're saying like from this hook that is inside the DevQ XMIT of the driver, of the of the weave driver, yeah, yeah. Um, you would redirect it out of there directly. Yeah, I would just say like redirect to my peer. And mm. then you would just put it on the TXQ of the other VETH. Like you would never touch the stack. Like the whole flow would be inside the VETH driver. Or... You would go from the VETH driver to the like a like a, a NIC driver. Mm. Like you would never yeah. have to sort of leave the yeah. sort of ecosystem of, of drivers. I think that makes sense, um, and it would still also be compatible with the existing programs, right? Because they are at the TC layer, and whether you first. I don't yeah. know, process TCP dump, you don't care, right? It's 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 still like nothing, not much more should change. Like maybe like you would do the, potentially like the scrubbing before that, but you could even do that in BPF. I mean, why would you care? Just, yeah, it's like the only yeah. sort of, yeah, why would you even scrub it? Like you wouldn't normally scrub a NIC driver, or like a NIC receive something, you wouldn't scrub it. So like, I, w I would say just meh, D don't even bother to scrub it. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Like. One thing that would also be useful with that is that you can drop packets also earlier. Like you, you don't even need to go to the process backlog yeah, yeah. just to reach the weave on the host namespace. Yeah, and there's no like, am I in polling mode or not in polling mode or like all this other yeah. stuff, right? Like it's not like, when do I turn that yeah. off? It's like, just drop it. Right. And the application inside that network namespace is not allowed to 
modify it, the program right. in any way. So it's always controlled by the orchestration and inside the Cause it's, cause from it's the host namespace. Yeah, because it's logically part of the left UV, right? Like regardless of how the code yeah. actually calls it, it's like logically it's it's part of that UV on the outside the pod. It's, yep. like it's receiving it there. Yeah. I mean that's the only reason I say XTP because that's kind of that's that looks like XTP hook as far as location, even if the data structure is not the same. So I guess then the question is, would you have like w uh, one BPF program that is associated with it with a driver, or like two? I, I think probably you would have like one for each weave uh, peer device, right? I, I think so. To when you stick with the like when you come from yeah. the from the host and go into the pod, you would you would need something. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. So yeah. Uh, well, because this case is, is is different compared to this one, right? I mean, here you would just skip the program that is. But that uh, should be here. okay, so right? That's okay because you have your program here. You can do policy enforcement and so on. But for applications that are in the host, they would still have to go to this and. There, you, you would probably have like a BPF program that is executed in the DevQX mid on this guy, and then one for for leaving. I mean, maybe maybe we finally like bite the bullet and do TX XDP programs, right? TX XDP program. Like oh, okay. We, like we only have RX now, but like we could have TX. Just hasn't been very compelling so far, but we could do it, right? I'm a bit skeptical about the. <laughs> so, what would be the the advantage? That you would get the call, basically there. But you could just do a TC there. It's just a little as asynchronous, like it's yeah. a asymmetric and slightly. Maybe the controller. It's probably fine. I mean, that's been the argument against doing mm. XTPTX all along, right? It's like, we'll just put the program in the TC side. So you'd have like a, mm. an XTP yeah. on RX and then a TC TX program. Yeah. One would work on XTP buffs in quotes and one would work on SKBs. I don't think Cilium code would care. It's fine, like, right? It's, like, yeah, no. it's all abstracted away anyways. Yeah. And then you would never touch the host stack. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And still, like doing the FIP lookup from the like for the host namespace, I think that's yeah, important. Yeah. But the uh, other things are not needed. Yeah. And then all the SRIV folks would be like, "There's no point." Yeah. <laughs> right. Like this is basically would be like SRIV at that point. Like you just plumbed it directly in. I was I was thinking also like to. Uh, put this logic, so let's say we would do like a BPF program that is part of the driver, like of, a, of such a weave driver, right? What we, uh, what you what we mentioned earlier. Like, um, like in XDP, right? Like, so like if I look, think of the flow, right? There's the SKB forward, and then I would like call it XDP run immediately after that, right? I, I wouldn't even do like... SKB forward, just call it immediately before yeah. SKB forward. Like, yeah, because like, you're going like, like, to drop it if you're going to drop it. Like, just have a DevQX met, and it calls the BPF program that is sitting on the driver. And if there's nothing sitting on the driver, it just K3 is the SKB. It, it, it yeah, just yeah, black sure. hole the driver. But logically, that's the receive. Like, like we can play like software optimizations in the driver, but like logically, from a model, that XTP program should be on the 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 outside, with the UV. Logically, it would yes. be in the outside, but it's actually inside. It's that, fine. Yeah, it doesn't matter, right? Because yeah. they, because they, yeah, I think we're saying the same thing. I think that makes sense. I I, I was also thinking like uh, to to maybe put this into its own um, device driver thing. Like uh, I don't know. Like right now, it it seems to me like half of the <laughs> of the weave driver code is now XDP related, which I think very few people use, and also partially sitting in fastpath. So it's not needed for this. And the other thing is also like this, um, that is related to this, uh, where people now made the weave driver multi queue, which yeah. is it's actually broken. I think <laughs> it's, it's so. Let's say for example, you would have like uh, sixteen 
two pairs, like for your for your weave driver, and then your actual it's physical NIC, it would maybe have more than that. And the network stack set actually sets the SKBQ mapping um, for the weave because it's now multi queue and so that thing is retained even all the way until the physical driver and like some yeah, yeah. like like some of the drivers like the one for AWS they will just take whatever is there so you cannot use the full the full range of queues so, so I, lost, I, I lost track of this <laughs> and then like when i was working on it for xdp like it wasn't multi queue yet like what is the yeah. point of having multi queues like why don't you just use the thread that you're on like like why like there's some context you some my, uh, xmit it, and then your dev queue xmit is called from somewhere. Why yeah. do we need to have? Why do we need any queuing at all in VE? It's like completely think, software. Yes, exactly. But I think my so my understanding is that this was done because of XTP. So when you uh, have an XTP program on your physical NIC that is processing all the RX stuff, and you want to forward that to one of the weave drive, like to one of the weave devices. Um, you would need it there, that's, but. But why? <laughs> right, like you do, like, yeah. like, you, like fundamentally you just want to call it dev queue xmit or exactly. put it on the receive queue. There's nothing there. There's like nothing the reason there. you have yeah. queues in a hardware is because there's DMA. Like you need yep. to like fetch the descriptor. There's no descriptor here. Like it's just an SKB. I mean. Yeah, that's why I would like to make it minimal again. I think like we stuck on this slide for too long. Yes. <laughs> okay. Go <on>. Next topic. <laughs> uh, so the second topic is around the socket hooks for uh, UDP and TCP in particular. Um, so in case of Cilium, we uh, use those socket hooks for connect, send message, receive message, get peer name and bind for the east-west load balancer. So the way it works, uh, is that on connect or send message, um, if the destination in the socket address structure is to one of the service web and ports, it will select the backend. And like for traffic coming, coming back in on either receive message or if the application is doing a get peer name, um, we will do the reverse translation. So we will just you know, lie to the application that it's actually connected to the service web instead of some concrete backend. We, and we also use uh, use bind to block some of the bind requests, but it's a unrelevant detail. And um, so like the, the connect hook can be used for both UDP and TCP. Um, UDP is maybe a bit more special. Uh, in the case of UDP, you can actually use connected UDP, but also unconnected UDP. Um, and both it is like both even at the same time for the specific socket. If you, um, one thing we have seen is where some DNS resolvers in the wild, they use uh, connected UDP. And there's actually a, um, a problem that we run into. Uh, so given it, it, it would do connect, it would pick one of the backends, uh, like for, for resolving DNS. But then at some later point in time, when the backend goes away, um, the application doesn't notice it. So it will just try to continue sending traffic to that because there's no signal um, that would be propagated back to the application. Because like the send message hook that we have, for, uh, even for UDP, is not called in that case. So it, it, it's not invoked. Um, for TCP, it's usually not a problem. I mean, it's not particularly nice, but it would, you would get a reset uh, if, if it still tries to uh, talk to that backend, even though it, it is going away. And this is basically uh, how it looks. So you have the case where it's not connected. We don't call into the send message hook. And one proposal, yeah. So in the UDP case, you should at least get something like a port unreachable or address unreachable ICMP. Is there something you can do with that? Um, yeah, right. I mean, right. As the network is getting a notification that the back end went away in that case, right? And so it's just a matter of making sure the application can get it somehow. You would have to make sure that the application can get it somehow, like out of band. Right. But actually, what you, like, 
what you actually want is, I mean, there are still other backends where you could do the DNS resolution, for example. So you would just have to, you know, that's what I'm trying to propose here. So like a new hook for the send message case when you have a connected uh, socket. Can, for example, be a connected UDP. That's what we definitely need. And connected TCP could be an option as well. And I was thinking like to have the input context similar to the one for for bind, where you just push, where you just put in the socket, and with that you can uh, look up whether the socket is actually associated to one of the backends and it's talking to an actual service, and if that still exists, and if not, um, then what we could do potentially is to have a connect uh, helper call, and then you would reconnect this to a new backend for for UDP, so that um, in the kernel, like for that socket, it would cache a new DST entry, and um, you would basically tell the kernel now like to uh, use the new backend instead of the one that is that that went away. Actually, it's a bit ugly in the sense that you would then have to call this program and do the check every time connected UDP does a send message. But yeah, that's what I, I was going to say. Like, don't you want to out of this send message? Like, don't you want to do like almost a callback and then change this all? Like, we, we should have some event that the, like, where do you do the delete out of the math? Right? Because that's where mm -hmm. you really want to update the socket. Because otherwise you're in the data path, like, which, I mean. But then you have to track all the sockets on your node in all the different namespaces that would be talking to that potentially. Meaning what? like a connection tracking, basically, right? Like, what's the, yeah. what are all the socket maps to this back end? Yeah, but I don't know if you want to be in this in every send, right? But if I get the problem correctly, like the other side, you will know that there's other servers and other port is going away. So you just, well, at this point on your local host, like iterate all, the, all of the sockets, all of the connected UDP sockets that potentially will not get any notification, just iterate all of them, see what they're connected to something that's dead and just force whatever, reset them, not reset, but do something with them, reconnect do, them underneath, so tear them down somehow. I mean, in the in the case of UDP, you would you, you would have to select a new one, but then you have to either, you have to somehow keep track. You, you, so you would need some mechanism to track all the sockets that are related to a, a given backend, right? Like. You don't keep track. Like when you know backend is away, like on this host, like see where they're connected to, because that's the only problem for connected UDP. So you know where they're talking to. You try to all the sockets, see the destination IP port, and if they indeed of the service that going away, then mm. do something with them instead of like getting another hook. Because like okay. you, because yeah. the problem is a slow pass, right? That right, that slow rarely path, yeah. happens. And here you want to like sacrifice fast you pass for this. It just it. feels yeah. odd. I agree. So the proposal is to have like a socket iterator through all the namespaces and then see if it's connected to that backend and then select a new one. And for TCP, you could probably we could probably have something like the like with SS tool. I think they added like the socket kill mechanism. You could you could it would make sense to just kill the socket so that it doesn't even emit packets on the wire. A, a, a helper to kill a socket would be useful in general. I think we would use it for other things like security things, right? Like yeah. right now we just deaden all the packets when we're like, yeah, we don't like this these the socket anymore. But mm. it would be nice. Or sometimes we we can force a reset on TCP. But it would be nice in UDP to just like. I, I agree. Yeah, Get rid of it. that would be useful in general. So I, yeah, okay. So I will look into the socket iterator, and we would still need this uh, BPF Connect helper so that we can select a new backend from there, from the iterator. But that would solve yeah. it. All right, that's good. The new hook would be specific to UDP, correct? Or is there any case that you'd ever think of to want to use that hook for TCP? So for, yeah, I mean, for TCP, the, like. 
I mean, if it's UDP only, call it BPF UDP connect or something then, because otherwise people will be misled to think it works with any sockets. Oh, just, okay. like the, just like the, uh, the, the BSD connect API, right? Connect works mm -hmm. with UDP and TCP, like you said, right? And so yeah. that's why I'd e either make it generic enough that I mean, it could work for other things or enable it, it with UDP. Yeah. I mean, we, we could only allow it for the UDP, um, like for UDP sockets uh, specifically and not for TCP. And later on, if somebody cares, it could be added, but yeah. Well, if we okay. do, if we do more bike shading, it's not really connect. It's like connected UDP is not really connecting anything. No, so no. that's no. why it's the whole to, name it's, is it's like just caching the route. In the yeah, socket. So At least like there's some that. advantage in matching the classic BSD sockets name. Is yes, it's a misnomer, <laughs> but it's a misnomer everybody understands. So yeah, I agree. Cool. Yeah, that's all I had. <laughs>